Okay, good morning, and once again, thank you everyone for uh, coming along and joining us here today on this webinar. Uh, we are talking to you from sunny South Florida, so I hope wherever you are, we're bringing you uh, a little bit of warmth and sunshine. It is a beautiful day here today, so uh, not trying to rub it in for those of you who are in the Northeast. Um, but anyway, thank you again for coming here today, and um, I'm going to give you a few little housekeeping uh, types of facts. So, um, first of all, you'll probably notice pretty quickly that you can't talk, but I can, and I'm going to do a whole lot of that over the next hour or so. Uh, however, you do have a question area on your screen that you can type questions in, and I do encourage you to type questions. There will probably be some topics that we cover where you're going to want a little bit more information, and I will tell you now that some of those questions I won't be able to answer. And if you're paying attention, the questions I won't be able to answer generally uh, evolve around how much money can I make in this franchise system. And the reason for that is because um, there are laws in franchising that prohibit me from talking to you about things like that. So um, you can go ahead and ask those questions. I won't be able to answer them. So I am letting you know that right now. Um, this is going to take about an hour. And then depending on how many questions you ask, maybe another 15, 20 minutes for questions. So um, do ask questions, I do encourage it. And uh, generally the questions are very good. I will tell you the last webinar, the questions section took about an hour and a half. So um, we had some great questions and a lot of really good back and forth conversation going on. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy it enough and you'll have some additional questions and you'll type those on the screen. So I will introduce myself now. I am Marcel, and I'm the founder and CEO of LED Source. And uh, I will be doing all the talking, as I said today. So um, with that, let's get started. And of course, I clicked the button and nothing happened. So uh, these are some of the things that we're going to talk about today. And first of all, um, our story, who are we? We were the first. We were the first franchise company in uh, the LED space, and now there are a few others. So if you're searching around for a franchise opportunity in the LED world, you'll probably find a few others. And I'd be happy to talk to you about some of the benefits that um, I believe we have over all of those other companies. And uh, in fact, um, some of those other companies aren't very good. So. Uh, be very careful. Do due diligence on the company that you're dealing with. And I think over the next hour, uh, if you have spoken to any other company, you're going to probably find out that we are a real company with a very real opportunity and with very real projects behind us and people behind us. So we were the first franchise company in the LED space. We were the first LED solutions provider in this country, uh, LED only solutions provider. And we started back in as early as 2001, 2002. And um, many of you probably think that the LED space didn't even exist in, in 2001 and two, but it did. And my partner and I both come from a lengthy lighting background where uh, LED was just a perfectly logical uh, next step for us. We are LED lighting experts. And in fact, we've trademarked the term your LED lighting experts. And really, that just comes from experience, and it comes from having been around the product for 12 or 13 or 15 years now in many cases. And um, we've just got some very high-level people on our staff who have been in the lighting, commercial lighting, and LED space for many, many years. Uh, in fact, we've just recently hired a new gentleman, which you'll see his picture in a couple more slides here, uh, who comes from about 32 or 33 years in the lighting business and owns several patents in LED in what he calls solid state lighting. And so we, we really kind of revolve around this whole expertise thing and we do uh, treat ourselves and our franchisees as the experts in the market. We focus on B2B or business to business markets, uh, meaning that we really uh, don't do a heck of a lot of residential business. And uh, most of the residential business we do is higher end stuff where we're dealing with an architect or a builder or uh, possibly an interior designer or some sort of a contractor, um, but on larger projects. And, you know, the reasons behind that are fairly obvious. The, the opportunity is much larger in commercial, but also 
commercial business owners are buying lighting because of return on investment, because of cost savings, because of the payback generated by those lighting fixtures or lamps. And homeowners, generally, that's not why they buy lights. They buy lights so that they can see what they're cooking or so that they can walk through their hallways or whatever it is. Um, so it's a it's a much different uh, concept and a much larger opportunity in the business uh, to business markets. We have leading industry partnerships, meaning uh, on the supply side with with manufacturers, with vendors like Philips, like Hubble, very, very large companies. And what I can tell you is that is a much larger point than I think I'll even make it in this webinar, because if you are or have been in the lighting space or in the LED business uh, specifically, you've probably realized how difficult it is to form those relationships and how easy it is to get run over by those companies. Um, Philips being a great example, they're an awesome company, great brand, one of the largest companies in lighting, and um, yet they are not in a big hurry to go out and open up small distributors, especially small independent local companies. So they will push you through distribution, you'll be priced and treated in a way that probably will not allow you to uh, grow a large business and instead you'll just kind of be pushed off in the corner. And that's why so many small startup companies in the LED space end up with uh, unknown lighting brands, with lighting brands that are subpar in quality and just mostly imported products that nobody's ever heard of with very strange uh, company names. So um, that is really our story. That's kind of who we are in the industry and uh, and where we come from a little bit. Um, I do notice people are starting to type questions and I do encourage that you keep going on that. Uh, I'm gonna answer quickly two of these. Um, somebody asked if you can get a copy of the presentation after the webinar, yes you can. Uh, you're going to, uh, I'll, I'll go over this again later, but you will send an email to franchising at ledsource.com and request a copy. Just say that I was on the webinar and I'd like to get a copy of it. This webinar is being recorded and we will uh, make that available to anyone who asks for it. How many people are attending right now? We have, I think, 76 people attending right now. So um, we generally get anywhere between 15 and 100. And uh, so we've got a pretty good number of people out there right now. And there are three people attending physically in my office. That would be myself and Dean, who's our VP of technology, and Narmeen, who's our director of marketing. So um, now you know everything. Can I go to the next slide, please? Uh, this is our timeline. This is kind of where we came from and where we are today. So as I said earlier, we started in the LED space in around 2002. Uh, actually, we did business in LED dating back as early as probably 1999. And in 2005, we actually founded and named the company LED Source, but we were doing business as a different name prior to that, uh, myself and my partner, Gavin Cooper. In 2009, we came up with this awesome and sometimes crazy idea of creating a franchise system to grow our brand. And it was a very cutting edge idea because nobody had really ever thought of it in the LED space and even in the commercial lighting space at that time. So manufacturers really kind of turned up their uh, their nose at us a little bit and said, what the heck are you guys doing? And now they all want in. So uh, it seems that we've done the right thing. And, and hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll think so as well. Um, in 2010, we sold our first franchise which uh, the funny thing is in franchising, one of the, the rules 101 that they tell you when you go to let's open a franchise school is open all of your earliest franchises closest to home. So really open your franchises very close to your corporate office, which in our case is in South Florida. And we sold our first franchise in 2010 in Montreal, Canada. So not only was it far away, but it was in a foreign country. So, um, you know, we cannot be accused of of being uh, the simplest or sometimes smartest franchisor, I guess. And uh, in 2012, we founded our brand finance company. Uh, it's a private labeled financing company for our projects only. And we get called all the time asking us to finance other companies, competitors' projects, but we don't. 
But we founded that company and branded it in 2012 and matched ourselves up with a uh, backing company. So the, the financing is actually done by a finance company using our branding. Um, so they do all of the finance work. We do all the sales and we hand the paperwork and we collect the applications, et cetera. Uh, similar to a car dealership with a bank behind it. <clears throat> In 2013, we brought on a, a partner. And if any of you, and I, I know that a few of you come from the lighting community and come from the even LED business, um, you've probably heard of a company called Aero Electronics. They're a $20 billion company with about a billion dollars in the LED world. And um, they pursued us and, and uh, uh, we came up with a partnership in 2013. So they are part owner of our company and a strategic and valued partner of our company today. In 2014, we finalized and kicked off our national accounts program. We had been toying with it for about three years and uh, we just finally perfected it and really launched it in 2014. And we'll talk about national accounts. We'll talk about a lot of these things a bit later, but national accounts is a very, very important and key thing that we wanna talk about. And so I wanna make sure that uh, we spend a little bit of time on that slide. And in 2015, some of you might say, what do you mean you deepened your franchise commitment? And really what it is, is um, I, as the CEO of this company, decided that we were not acting as a franchise company. We were a lighting company that had franchises. So we've really kind of changed. Uh, we've had a bit of a lobotomy as, as far as our, our company is concerned, and we've changed our overall um culture to being much more of a franchise culture. And uh, one of those things that, that, that I can mention to you is the fact that we no longer call this the corporate office, we call it the franchise support center. And we're hiring more franchise support people than we are direct salespeople out of our uh, headquarters here in, in West Palm Beach. So um, we really are heavily committed to franchising. We've brought on a chief operating officer who comes from the franchising world and has uh, been very successful in the franchising world. We've hired more franchising people, so and we continue to hire more franchising people. So this, for us, 2015 really is the year of the franchise. Even though we have 14 active franchises out there already, um, all of our franchises know and, and are kind of going, whoa, these guys are serious now. So we're very serious about creating profitable and successful and uh, useful LED source franchises. So it's a good time. If you're thinking about coming on board, believe me, it's always been a good time, but it's much better now because we're actually uh, very committed to building a franchise company now. So there you have uh, the Brady Bunch, I guess. Uh, myself and my partner, Gavin Cooper, who moved here from England in 2004, uh, well, was traveling back and forth starting in 2002, but moved here in 2004. And as I said, we founded the company in 2005. <clears throat> Sandy, whose real name is Sanford Lechner, comes from about 15 or 16 years and very successful, uh, everything from being CEO to VP of uh, uh, a big public company, all sorts of roles in the franchise community. Very cool guy and really has been uh, the leader in, in changing the culture in our business to become much more <clears throat> of a franchise supporting culture. Karen Thompson is our HR director and also does a lot of work with our franchise prospects. So you may have already spoken with Karen and if you haven't, uh, uh, hopefully you will shortly after this webinar. Um, Dan Ocasio runs national accounts. Dean is our VP of technology. We have a lot of systems and processes and software that Dean is responsible for pulling it all together. I will tell you that is the one and only time I've ever seen Dean wear a tie. So uh, if you ever do come to the corporate office, I promise you, you won't recognize him in that tie. And uh, Narmeen, who I mentioned is our marketing director, is actually one of our most recent add-ons to, uh, to our staff here. And Tim Hardy is what we call a franchise business coach. So Tim is an individual who works specifically for and with our franchises, helping them close business, helping them develop business plans, 
helping them to um, anything related to being more successful in their business and to closing more business and being profitable. Uh, that is Tim's responsibility. So he's not like a, a sales guy for us that's out hammering franchises to buy more. He's actually working for the franchisees and helping them to build business. And one of the cool things about Tim, there's a couple of cool things. One is that he was at uh, very high uh, executive and managerial levels with, with very large manufacturers in the lighting and LED industries. Um, but also that he owns multiple patents in solid state or LED lighting. So he's a pretty smart guy. He's an engineer uh, and has a, a lengthy military, uh, very successful military background. Neat guy. Our franchisees love him. Can't wait for all of you to meet him. Um, we are asked a lot of questions about brands. I think franchise prospects want us to have every brand under the sun. Um, that is absolutely not the case. We have every brand under the sun virtually available to us because we are kind of an exciting and growing company. We're very unique in the French or in the uh, LED uh, industry. And therefore, most manufacturers really do come to us and say, we'd like you to carry our product. But we're very strategic in our product selections. And um, most of what we carry, everything that we carry, we carry for a very specific reason. Uh, sometimes it's not the entire product line, but it's 10 products that we think are amazing. Sometimes it's a value proposition where a particular line might be very similar to another line, but it's 30% lower in cost and, and maybe the quality isn't quite as good or whatever. So every product we carry, we carry for a reason. We try to fill holes in our product line and make sure that our franchisees have available to them everything that they need. However, one of the things that we're really focused on right now is building what we call a core product group. And our core product group is going to be made up of about probably 25 to 40 products that are your go-to product list that our franchisees use for um, uh, most of their projects. And it's based on uh, we've always got them in stock. You know what your profit margins are going to be, and they're more profitable than other products in our line, etc. So that's one of the things we're really, really focused on building right now, and that'll probably be complete in the next three to six months. Um, so these are some of our top brands. We carry probably a total of about 30 brands. We have about 12,000 SKUs in our system right now, and uh, my feeling is that a good 90% of a franchisee's sales are going to be based on less than 50 of those SKUs. So those are the ones that we try to focus on. These are some of our clients, just some of the bigger names that you might know. Um, some of these are national account clients for us. Some of them we've just done one very big, wonderful job with. Uh, most of these we're doing multiple projects with, though. So I think you might recognize some of the names on there. We obviously have thousands of clients. Between us and our franchisees, I think we've got some of the greatest brands uh, in business, period, who we are uh, happy and very fortunate to do work for. Everyone wants to know how big is this thing? How big is it going to get? What am I chasing here? How big is the LED world and, and what is our part of it? Uh, I'm not going to tell you all that stuff, but what I will do is show you a quick slide that shows you what the growth and expected growth of the industry is. So in 2010, factual uh, LED general lighting accounted for about $8.2 billion in revenue. Uh, that is global. And the expected global revenue of LED general lighting. So by when I say general lighting, I'm taking out things like edge lit uh, LED televisions, backlit LED televisions, LED headlights, LED taillights, traffic lights, um, things that are not you know, there for the purpose of lighting something. So we're talking about interior, exterior, general lighting, commercial lighting products that we are involved in as a company. Um, this information comes from a report called Lighting the Way, which was done by uh, a very uh, top leading analyst called McKinsey and Company. I do recommend that you Google that report, get a copy of that report and take a good look at it because um, that McKinsey and Company report is just very educational and pretty exciting. If, if you're not already excited about getting into the LED space, uh, definitely take a look at that McKinsey and Company Lighting the Way report. And it is free of charge and you can download it, I think in a PDF on, uh, on Google or your search engine of choice. 
I don't want to be uh, brand specific when it comes to search engines. Uh, focus channels really are just, um, some of you might call them verticals, some of you might call them something else. We call them focus channels. And really what they are is vertical markets. They're, um, we've broken our business down into, I believe the number today is 11. I'm not going to count these, but I think it's 11 or 12. And um, they're just, they're different markets that we think require a slightly different approach in each case, may require different training, may require a different background. Uh, from the franchisee who's going after that business. For example, government is, is an area where you don't want to just walk in off the street having never sold to the government and say, I'm going to focus on government. Um, each of our franchisees is coming in our door thinking that they're going to focus on all of these. And one of our goals in training is to get our franchisee, you know, kind of grab them by the ankles, pull them down to earth and say, you come from a 20-year career in pharmaceuticals, we think you should really spend the next 12 months going after healthcare opportunities. And that's because that's where your relationships are, that's where your network is, that's where your comfort level is. You know people, you know those buildings, you know your way around, uh, you know Maggie who runs the office in that particular healthcare building, and Maggie's going to walk you right into the facility manager. So that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for as we launch a franchise. Uh, we could certainly send you out there and say, well, you can sell to the world, go ahead and do it. But the better thing to do is to get you really focused on your low hanging fruit and where we think you're going to be most successful. Um, again, these are these are not the only markets we deal with, but this is a, a basic breakdown of the top markets that we're going after. What is the business model? And so what we've done is uh, kind of just created a little list here that shows you what things you're going to be doing on a daily basis, your top six things maybe that you're going to be doing on a daily basis, and the top six things that we might be doing on our side to support those top six things. So some are obvious, some maybe not so much prospecting. Uh, obviously, this is a sales-related business. This is not a business where you're just going to uh, you know, put a sign up on your door, unlock it, and there's going to be a line like a subway. Um, this is a business where until someone sells something or generates a lead, chances are you're not going to do any business. And so you're always prospecting. Um, you're doing local marketing. We're actually putting together programs where our franchisees can buy in at different levels on programs for local marketing that are generated and created and managed by us. Because we understand that some of our franchisees will only have two or three people in that franchise office and they don't have a marketing person. So we're gonna do your marketing for you. You can opt into different packages, uh, et cetera. Audits really is the, the process or um, the, the act of walking through a building or uh, you know, a, a, an opportunity that you've identified, counting lights, taking pictures of lights that you're not sure what they are, um, gathering information, taking light measurements, uh, asking several uh, questions that we've told you to ask. And so what you're doing is you're collecting details, you're, you're collecting facts that we are then going to generate a proposal based on those facts. And this is all done by way of some pretty fancy software that's very easy to use, and we train you on it and provide it for you and everything else. Um, and then that information finds its way into Salesforce where you're uh, managing opportunities, you're managing leads, you're managing the process of of uh, just taking all of these different deals to close in Salesforce, which is a very well-known and, and widely used tool that I think probably some of you have also used. Um, and then you're supporting the installation. You're not doing the installation. So any of you who have already asked that question, uh, I'm answering it for you right here. Chances are you're not physically going to go in and screw in light bulbs or uh, put fixtures in the ceiling you're going to either have a contractor that you hire to do that and then add it to the bill, or um, they're going to have their own contractor on the customer side, or they may even do it using their own maintenance or facility staff. Uh, you're supporting that installation, you're helping them through it, you're making sure everything goes well, um, those types of things. It's really more of a customer service function. You're obviously closing deals on a daily basis and you're managing customer relations. You're, a lot of people think because LEDs last so long, 
that it's kind of a one hit kind of product. I'm going to sell it and I'll never get to talk to that customer again because it's going to last 25 years. And that may be great in some opportunities. Usually, like let's look at a hotel, for example. We'll get a call from a hotel who says, you know, we've really got a problem in our lobby where these um, lights that are 30, 40 feet in the air, they fail constantly and, and then it gets dark in our lobby and then we have to bring in these special lifts and we have to disrupt our business and everything else. We really need help with this lobby. So we'll go in and do the lobby for them and they'll never have to change those lights again. But while we're there, we'll say, you know, you've got a real problem in your hallways. You, you're using these very high wattage products in your hallways. And I was in one of your halls and it was very dark because some of those lights were out you know, we could really provide you with a great solution for those hallways. And you move from the hallways to the stairwells, to the parking garage, to outside of the hotel, et cetera. So that, that hotel becomes a uh, customer for a long time for maybe five, six, eight projects. And then what happens is the VP of that hotel who you've been dealing with or the CFO or the engineer or the owner moves to another project or opens another hotel or whatever it is and you follow him and and so you've got a customer for life and we have a lot of those types of customers who are uh recurring customers and that's what you want obviously because then there's no cost of customer acquisition on our side um technical and design support so um one of the great things about our franchise system is we've built it around not needing lighting geniuses on the other end if you have a lighting background, great. It makes it much easier and faster and you can manage more opportunities and you'll probably grow a bigger franchise faster. Um, but if you have no lighting background whatsoever, we will teach you the basics so that you can find your way through a building and you know what to call a different light and, and what they look like and the, the basic functions. But um, you don't have to be a lighting expert because you've got lighting experts supporting you here at the Franchise Support Center. And um, so we are one of the few companies who do what we do, who have a full design team on staff. We have CAD guys sitting at computers who are capable of designing and printing out drafts and, and uh, dealing with architects and everything else. So um, we provide that service not only for our franchisees, but for our national accounts as well. Um, marketing, as I said earlier, we're going to have all kinds of programs you can opt into. And then we also provide a national marketing and, and we do a lot of um, social media marketing and we do a lot of what we call case study marketing, which I'll get into in a bit. Uh, lead generation is something very new that we're creating here. We're creating a call center that is going to be providing leads to our franchisees. And... Um, also, that same call center is managing the incoming leads that come in either through our website, through direct phone calls, through uh, any form of marketing, and then they are pushed out to the franchisees as well. And the cool thing is our Salesforce system allows us to basically put a lead in and put it right in your file. So you'll be sitting at your computer and a lead pops up saying, you know, uh, the support center has sent me a lead for a school, you know, right down the road from me or whatever. It's already in your system because we've entered it for you. Product supply is a very big part of what we do. We manage all of the suppliers. We are, um, I guess, the distributor in a sense. So uh, all of the product flows through us. And uh, that way, you know, we it, it acts like a buying consortium. So we're not just buying for one office. We're buying for 15 and eventually for 250 offices. And so the buying power is much greater uh, because of the numbers involved. And also, you know, we're managing quality. We're managing returns. We're managing an awful lot on the product side. Financing, we manage the Lumen Money financing system. Um, and along with financing and Lumen Money, we also manage rebates, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. And then project management, and I'll talk about a few particular opportunities uh, that we've been involved in where we were the project manager, and we do it also on a national account level as well. So these are basically core functions on both sides. I hope it gives you a better idea of what the model is, the business model, and the support model as well. Uh, once again, I'm sure this is generating questions because there's a lot of you on this webinar. So um, please type in those questions and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. Why franchise? So there's reasons for you. There's reasons for us. One of the great reasons for you is this little quote up there from Fran Ned on the top left corner. 
franchises succeed 42% more than a typical startup small business. And I'm sure all of you has read or maybe even been in a victim of the statistics, which are, I believe it's 90% of all small business startups fail. Uh, that is not a very good number. And I'm knocking on my wood desk right now and telling you that I've started, uh, I think this is my fifth or sixth business that I've started in my life, and none of those failed. So I'm uh, I'm definitely going against statistics on that one. And uh, but 90% of small businesses fail, 42% less of those uh, fail on the franchise side. So in other words, it just, it, it increases the odds. It, it makes the odds of you staying in business better. That's one of the great things. There's a lot of other things. The fact that you're in business uh, for yourself, but not by yourself is a common statement made in the franchising community. And in our case, that is 100% truthful. You know, you always have a huge amount of support on the other end of the phone and sometimes sitting right in your office. You can call up Tim, our franchise business coach, and say, you know, I've got this opportunity with American Airlines to light 12 hangers for these big jets. Uh, can you come in and go to that meeting with me? And um, we're there for you. So, you know, while you are your own independent business with your own set of books and your own P&L and everything else, uh, you have a huge amount of support and and a partner basically in us, in the franchisor. On our side, um, need obviously, we had a demand in every market, so we needed locations in every market. And when we started our franchising business, when we, when we basically modeled it out, it was 2009, and banks were in full on meltdown at that point. And we were a small business, so I didn't feel like uh, private equity or venture capital was a good way for us to go. We would have had to give up all of our equity and we wouldn't have controlled our business. So franchising became a very obvious um, uh, uh, sort of vehicle to grow our business at that time based on the demand and not necessarily the capital in place to make that demand uh, become a reality. Speed. We can grow as fast as we need to. If I need to go out and sell 100 franchises this year because that's what the market demands, then all I have to do is hire two or three franchise salespeople, do a little bit of marketing, and we've got 100 franchises. And you know, we're a very uh, we're a business that gets an awful lot of interest in franchises. And I will tell you, we turn down probably 70% of the franchise prospects that come in for one reason or another. Um, not because we're snobby or because we're only looking for rich people or only, you know, a certain type of person. But we want to be pretty confident that whoever comes into our franchise system can succeed in the LED business in our franchise system. Uh, it is a proven method. And people complain all the time about the amount of documentation in franchising, the amount of contracts and paperwork and stuff. That's actually one of the things, as much as I hate it, I like that because it makes me comfortable that both of us have basically really been completely transparent to each other. You know all of our faults, you know all of our, uh, uh, you know everything that you're getting into, and we pretty much know everything that we're getting into. It's a full disclosure business model. Uh, scale and distribution is a big one. You know, whatever size the market grows to, whatever size LED source grows to, we will be able to meet the demand for product uh, by way of our franchise offices, because again, if we need more offices, we open more franchises. And the ownership mentality was important to me. I didn't feel like in such a disruptive and evolutionary industry as LED, I didn't think that we could hire successfully uh, a couple of hundred managers to open offices throughout the country or throughout North America. And so for me, having an owner with skin in the game makes a whole lot of sense and and it's actually really worked out well for us in that regard. Uh, I'm sure that created some questions. Here we have a squashed map of the United States. I know there are some disagreement on my staff over this squashed map, but this used to be wider, I'm sure of it. Anyways, uh, perhaps you can ask me questions. Didn't the United States used to be wider? Uh, so this is where our franchisees are now. As you can see, nothing is centrally located on this map. We're about as spread out as we possibly could be in, uh, in the North American continent. And um, so we currently have three in Canada. We've got uh, three or four really great prospects that we're talking to in Canada right now. I know at least uh, 
One of them from Toronto is on the call right now or on the webinar right now. I did see his name. And um, we've got them kind of scattered throughout the United States. Uh, the two sitting in the middle of the ocean, that's not a typo. Those are actually in the Caribbean. And we plan to open up to about between eight and 10 locations in the Caribbean. We have a master franchise in the Caribbean. And uh, the one there in Florida is actually us. That's our, uh, our headquarters. So our franchisees, and we're actually opening a couple more right now too. We have one opening in Virginia uh, in the next month or so. And uh, I'm not sure where else. Gaining traction. Our franchisees really are becoming recognized as leaders in their marketplace. And um, that comes from the customer side on the branding. And it also comes from the manufacturer side where manufacturers really have started to believe in our franchise model and they've really started supporting it. So initially we had a lot of pushback from companies like Philips and Hubble. And now those are probably the most supportive companies when it comes to our franchise system. In fact, and I'll show you a slide here coming up. Um, we did our training, our franchise conference a couple of months ago, I think in September, uh, was it September? Yeah, September of 2014, we did in the Phillips headquarters in New Jersey, and we had about 60 people there um, for two days of really, really great training with Phillips in an unbelievable, I think they spent 15 or $20 million on this training facility, um, but just an incredible experience. And uh, so we get a huge amount of support from our largest vendors now uh, for our franchisees. We love the fact that our franchisees still like us. And I know that that sounds crazy, but most franchise systems who have 14 or 15 franchises uh, and have been in business for about three years, about 80% of those franchises are, are wanting to lynch that franchise company. And in our case, they all still like us. We love them. We have a great relationship with our franchisees. We're very honest and truthful with them. We work very hard for them. And uh, so these are some of the nice things that our franchisees have said about us. Juanita was actually our first woman-owned, female-owned franchise. She's in Charlotte. And uh, we now have two. We have one in Calgary, Canada as well. Um, and, of course, we welcome uh, women entrepreneurs into our system. And Juanita is one of our toughest franchises as far as, uh, you know, you don't want to get in her way if you're a competitor. She will absolutely run over you. So Juanita's doing a fantastic job. She's growing a beautiful business in, in Charlotte, and we're very proud of her. And uh, she obviously still likes us, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the said training conference. So top uh, right is, uh, I forget the guy's name, but he's, uh, I think his name is Mark something, isn't it? Mark something. He's the head of training for Phillips. Uh, really great guy, extremely knowledgeable. He used to be the president of the Illuminating Engineering Society, which is kind of the governing lighting society, um, and did a fantastic job for two days, but that's within their training center. Uh, the picture below that was one of the most amazing experiences for most of our franchisees and even some of our own staff, where um, we were hosted uh, so to get to that Times Square ball, you actually go into a Walgreen in Times Square and there's an elevator in the back corner and you ride up this elevator into a little office where basically it's the curator of the ball. It's a guy who has taken care of this Times Square ball for 20 years or something and um, knows everything about it. So he gave us a really cool slide presentation about the history of the ball and how it was lit in the beginning, uh, how it's lit now. It's actually using Philips LED now. And uh, and then we got to go up a very crazy staircase to the roof of this building. And we got to go up and get our picture taken with the ball. You could touch the ball. You could. Uh, so it was really just a cool experience. And, and that whole training conference was an amazing experience. We look forward to it every day. If it wasn't for cost, both on our side and the franchise side, um, we would probably do it three or four times a year because it just pays such dividends and has such huge value. Uh, right now, I will tell you for your own timing, we're currently planning our 2015 conference somewhere in South Florida in September. And we have one of the top 10 speakers, uh, keynote speakers in the country already booked. And uh, we're going to do a lot of really cool things at this conference. So if you're planning on coming in, make sure you get in uh, prior to September because I wouldn't want to miss these conferences. They really are a great event. 
And uh, it's also a great opportunity to meet our manufacturers because our manufacturers support the event. They come in, they show product, they talk, they, they uh, educate. So uh, we break down our products into two main categories, lamps and fixtures. Many of you uh, lay people call lamps light bulbs, and uh, we're much more technical, so we call them lamps. So um, lamps basically are light bulbs, and they're in many shapes and sizes. And so there are roughly 98% of the traditional bulbs or lamps currently have a replacement in an LED form. Um, the savings are generally between 40 and 90% uh, based on what you're replacing. The reason for that big spread is um, fluorescent. If you're replacing fluorescent, Fluorescent, one of the characteristics is that it's already pretty efficient. So you're not going to get as much savings on a fluorescent as you are on an incandescent or something that is not as efficient as a fluorescent. And the LED typically will last between 10 and 50 times longer than the traditional lamp that you're replacing. Again, the big spread is, is based on fluorescent or HID, metal halide, um, different technologies that already do have relatively long life. But we'll replace a 10,000-hour fluorescent with a 50,000-hour LED, for example. And I could spend time and talk about how those ratings uh, are actually worked out and how you're much better off with an LED, but I won't. We could do that in a different conversation, maybe when you're here for training. I'm going to remind you again, we've probably got, I don't know, 10 slides left or something and uh, ask your questions, type in your questions. I'm not getting near as many questions as I usually do from a group this big. So go ahead and type in questions and I'll get to as many as I can at the end. And um, I think you'll find those to be pretty educational. Fixtures come in all shapes and sizes. Um, basically a fixture usually incorporates lamps. So the, one of the big benefits of LED fixtures is that it was made as a complete a uh, group of components for the purpose of being an LED. So you're not just shoving an LED lamp into a fluorescent fixture and hoping it survives, for example. You're actually, it's a fully integrated LED fixture where the cooling is proper. Uh, all of the components are made to last as long as the lamp is, for example. So these are, these are important things when deciding between fixtures and lamp replacements. You are generally going to get a much longer life out of an LED fixture than you will out of LED lamps put into a traditional fixture. Um, most fixtures are in higher wattage applications, anywhere from uh, 100 or 200 watts up to several thousand watts. And for example, in warehouses, uh, we're, we're often replacing between a 400 and a thousand watt metal halide. Um, you'll see a building here soon, the Miami <coughs> Tower, where we replace 2000 watt metal halides. When we're talking about sports lighting, we're generally replacing 2,000 watt metal halides. So you're replacing 2,000 watts with somewhere between three and 500 watts of LED. Um, so you get a big savings, but you also get a lot of maintenance savings and stuff in the way of the fact that 200 or 300 or 500 watts doesn't generate near as much heat as 2,000 watts does. So it's an important fact. Um, many applications, high bay, low bay, troffers, area and site. Uh, some of you may not know what that is, but the bottom right picture, that is a very typical troffer. It's what some of you might call a two by four or just a fluorescent fixture, but it's a lay-in fixture that goes in the tile in your ceiling. That is uh, technical, the technical name for it is a troffer. Um, and we have LED troffers. We also have LED troffer kits where you don't have to replace the back of the troffer. Um, we've got a kit that will just replace the front of it. So it's kind of wedged in between a lamp replacement and a fixture replacement and has the best of both worlds. Um, and then, you know, just all kinds of different stuff here. So the bottom uh, left is a fairly fancy high bay that you would use in a retail application. Uh, the middle right is what's called a digital lumens high bay. So it doesn't look like what would normally go into a warehouse, but one of the cool things about that fixture is it's a smart high bay. It's a high bay that allows um, complete control. It's got controls built into it and it communicates back wirelessly to a computer and they're constantly adjusting themselves based on what the requirement for light is at that time. Projects, it's hard to give you 
a, a really great snapshot of our projects because we have so many and so many different types. But this is just a great kind of cross section of a bunch of different stuff, very different stuff. Um, most of you wouldn't think of a parking garage as being very much fun or, or very sexy to light or whatever. Um, I will tell you, it's one of the greatest returns on investment in the LED space. Uh, most projects will pay back for themselves. The lights will pay for themselves within somewhere around two to three years. A parking garage generally is going to be under one year. And that's because you're replacing pretty high wattage with pretty low wattage. Um, they're on 24-7, 365 days a year, which is a big thing. If you're looking for low-hanging fruit in the LED world, you want lights that are on a lot. You want lights that are on a long time. And uh, so parking garages are great. Uh, the one in the center is a school. It's a private school. Um, gas stations, we do a heck of a lot of gas stations, especially what you can see there, those canopy lights that are underneath the the part where you uh, where you fill up your car, but also the convenience stores. We do a lot of convenience stores at gas gas stations. Bottom left is a large new Chinese restaurant chain based out of L.A., and uh, we're currently working with them on the plans for a very large uh, location in Las Vegas. So it's going to be, I have no idea, I would guess a couple of hundred thousand dollars in lighting for that particular project. Um, it's going to be a pretty exciting project, very visible uh, in a very cool uh, casino hotel. So that's one that we're looking forward to. The middle is a uh, middle bottom is a uh, salon. Obviously, we do a lot of salons and we have lots of good case studies for salons as well. And I have no idea what the bottom right is. It looks like a hotel to me. So that is probably a fancy schmancy hotel lobby bar or something um, in New York. So that means drinks are about $16 each. These are some of our more prominent projects. The Miami Tower, which I've spoken of, and I think I might actually have a case study on coming up. Uh, so I won't go into that too much. But I think many of you have seen that if you watch the Miami Heat ever. Uh, the are they, They're not the world champions right now, are they? They lost last year. So former world champion Miami Heat. Um, if you, as they go to commercials, they always show the Miami Tower, and it's usually in heat colors when there's a heat game going on. Starbucks, we've been doing some of their um, flagship locations. This particular one is in Times Square, uh, and then this Bank of America building is in Fort Lauderdale. We lit the entire outside of that building. Uh, along the bottom here, you'll see that we're in the news quite often. We're uh, we've always kind of been a pretty interesting company from a standpoint that we're new, we're different. Uh, we were the first in so many areas, and so um, we get a lot of free publicity. And maybe even some of you came to us through that free publicity. I hope so, because that means it's working, right? So this is a uh, brewery that was done by one of our franchisees. I believe it was in Lawrence, Kansas. And it's a fairly historic uh, brewery who's very well known in that area, so it was a pretty big project. And the greatest news on this particular case study is the bottom right there, 82% total energy savings. But if you look at those numbers, I mean, that's what this is about. Uh, you know, you're saving just a ton on lighting and energy and operating costs. Total annual savings, $9,500. If I remember correctly, this was around a $25,000 project. So it was about a two and a half year payback with 82% energy savings. Um, so this is a, a fairly typical case study. You are able to download actual case studies on our website. And another interesting fact about the LED business, most of our competitors' websites, the pictures on their sites are of jobs that other companies did, some of which we've done. Um, the pictures on our site are all jobs that we've done. And so are all the case studies, et cetera. So we've done an awful lot of projects. There are a lot of companies out there who haven't done a lot of projects. So you might, uh, as you're looking at some of our competitors, you might want to just pay some close attention to that. We use these case studies, by the way, in what we call case study marketing. So we will take a case study for a U.S. bank and we might go into a Bank of America or a SunTrust bank or whatever that bank is and say, look what we did for the U.S. bank down the street, as opposed to showing them a picture of a car dealership and saying, look what we did for a car dealership. We could do something kind of like that, but using bank type of lights and in a bank environment. And instead, we go into a jewelry store with pictures of jewelry stores and, and case studies from jewelry stores 
And they usually have quotes and testimonials and bright, fancy pictures of before and after and um, very, very useful uh, pieces of, of literature for our franchisees to use to gain projects. Um, we've been very successful with this case study marketing. I'm sorry, once again, that one, that U.S. bank was 81% total energy. That was done by our L.A. franchise. I believe that's in Orange County somewhere. Um, and this is an Ashley furniture. We do all of the Ashley and city furniture locations in the southeast. And um, generally, uh, there's an awful lot of light bulbs in an Ashley or city furniture location, sometimes up to two or 3,000 light bulbs and we're replacing them all with LED. This particular one, I don't know why the total energy savings was so low. I think it was because we actually increased the light levels in that particular uh, furniture store. So instead of um, whatever they were getting, we might have given them a 30 or 40 percent light level increase. So um, very nice projects though. National accounts, this is something that I don't want to glance over too quickly. I want to spend a few minutes on this slide. Um, so national accounts really sounds pretty obvious. It's an account where they have multiple locations nationally. But sometimes the nas a national account might be the federal government, for example. It might be Ford. It might be something not so obvious. But let's, let's kind of stay focused on the smaller national accounts that we do a lot of business with. Some of these brands at the bottom, Menchie's Yogurt, uh, Ashley Furniture, Miami Subs. Uh, Miami Subs, by the way, you might say, isn't that company gone? Didn't they die a while back? Because they really kind of became stale. And what happened is Pitbull, the, uh, the hip hop artist Pitbull, bought into the company and really they've got a whole new revamped menu, revamped style. And uh, we've been doing some really cool lighting with them uh, on a global level. So uh, Hurricane Grill and Wings is a chain based out of South Florida. Uh, which is a grill and wings and, and bar. And uh, we do all of their locations. Um, recently, I believe our Denver franchise did three of their locations in that area. Uh, Pino's Palette or Palais, I'm not sure today how to say that still, even though we've been doing business with them for a year. That is one of these places where um, housewives go and paint pictures and drink martinis. And so you end up with some pretty interesting pictures, I think, at the end of the day. And Massage Envy is one we're very proud of. We work as a very close partner with Massage Envy. And uh, in fact, today, if you were to go buy a Massage Envy franchise, in your contract, it would say you have to buy your lighting from LED source. And part of the reason behind that is through our national account program, we actually manage the quality of their lighting. We maintain the integrity of the look of the inside of the Massage Envy locations. And that's very important to them because what was happening is they would sell a Massage Envy and then doing value engineering on the franchisee side, they'd go buy the lighting from Home Depot or from wherever and would do it themselves. And they'd have different colors throughout the space and different quality and fluorescence flickering and all kinds of stuff. And uh, so we help that not happen. And we also provide one point of contact for those national accounts so that um, the the corporate office, when they have an issue, they just call us. Or when a franchisee has an issue, they just call us. So point one, one centralized point of contact. Point two, we provide a complete full package, everything from design, project management, development, financing, rebates. And we have a franchisee revenue share program. So let me talk about that for a moment. If we're talking about a new construction situation, it's completely different than retrofit. Let's focus on retrofit. So with Massage Envy as an example, we're about to roll out a new retrofit program with Massage Envy. I think they have somewhere around 800 existing locations today, and they are going to promote each of those locations to upgrade their lighting package to their new state-of-the-art LED lighting package. When a franchisee is interested and they contact either headquarters of Massage Envy or headquarters of LED Source, that lead gets pushed out to the nearest local franchise who will go in and work with that Massage Envy franchise owner on relighting their locations. So I will tell you a couple of things about Massage Envy owners. Number one, most of them own more than one Massage Envy location. Some of them own many, 20 of them. Um, the other thing is most of them own other businesses. So it could be a hotel, it could be anything, 
But um, in particular, a lot of them own this thing called European wax. And I don't know exactly what European wax is, but I know it's some sort of a spa. And um, they're located in strip malls next to Massage Envy locations and are owned by that same owner. So we get additional or our franchisees get additional opportunities to light other businesses and other buildings through those Massage Envy owners that have been supplied to you by us. The other thing that happens when we roll out that retrofit program is we will get on a uh, webinar with our franchisees and we'll educate you as to exactly how that Massage Envy program works, what products are included in it, what the design is, why that design is, what kind of lights are being replaced, how to price it, how to do this, uh, what your profit margins look like, how to sell it, everything. And you can actually go out and start pitching local massage envy owners who are not necessarily listening to the propaganda coming from their own parent company or their own franchisor. So um, great opportunities there. Another opportunity for the national account program that I will tell you about quickly is what we call a founder. And um, if, for example, you have a cousin who is the head of store development for um, I don't care, Pizza Hut, let's say, uh, you can bring us into a meeting with your cousin. We'll sit down, talk to them. And now your cousin says, okay, I want to roll this out. Let's get started. What we will do is we'll build a uh, national account program for them. We'll build a book. We'll build a design. We'll create a, a list of products and everything else. That generally takes anywhere from a month to two or three months, depending on how fancy their lighting design is, how, how crazy their uh, internal uh, interior designer or architect is with their plans or intentions or desires to change the lighting. So anywhere from one to three months, we can get a package created and we'll go back and pitch it. And usually they open up a pilot program and then they just kind of open the floodgates and we do all of those Pizza Hut locations. Because you are listed in that account as the founder, every time one sells, you get a VIG. You get a percentage of the sale, and you're tied into that account eternally as the founder. So it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity for residual income. And uh, believe me, some of these guys you know, are getting checks for, for thousands of dollars every month just based on this, uh, that program. So um, you can capitalize on, on relationships. Now, there's obviously a lot of rules. We don't just let you go through the local yellow pages and pick out a bunch of national accounts and say, I want to register all of these. I'm the founder. Because there has to be a relationship, and it has to be a relationship that will stand the test of competition, et cetera. I'm positive that you've got questions related to our national account program. So please go ahead and type in your questions. We're getting... Uh, probably, I don't know, four or five slides from the end here. And I'm going to start talking faster because I'm already at my hour limit that I usually give myself. So um, another important one, though, so I'm not going to fly too quickly through this project financing, blue man money. So as you know, these jobs are generating savings and they're generating a payback and an ROI. And so let me give you an example. Let's say on a particular job, we've come up with um, the, the plan for lighting and we're saving them $1,000 a month between electric and maintenance costs and labor and whatever it is. So we're saving them $1,000 a month. There's a very good chance we're going to be able to, and let's say it's a two and a half year payback on that particular job. So there, there's a good chance we're going to be able to finance that job, better than good chance, there's a very real chance that we're gonna be able to finance that job. Uh, let's say we give them a three year term and they're saving $1,000 a month, but that cost of the payment for all the product is only $800 a month. So they're pocketing $200 a month right out of the gate um, that they were paying before, meaning your cost of the lights plus your cost of electrical and maintenance and all of those other things combined is $200 less than it used to be. And so you're pocketing $200 a month in cash flow. And guess what? In three years when that financing is done, you get all of that money. You get the entire $1,000 every month. And those lights are going to probably last another 10 or 12 or 15 years. And so there are additional benefits too. 100% project financing, no additional collateral. What does that mean? 100% project financing means everything from any design costs that are uh, included, installation costs, 
uh, even things like recycling costs. So, you know, quite often if you're doing a government or a hospital or a large Fortune 500 type of company, they're not just going to go throw fluorescent troffers in the garbage bin in the back. They're going to they're going to hire a uh, a company to come in and do that recycling for them. And we can provide them with that company. We do have national deals with with recycling companies. So um, we can build those costs into this. And so it's 100 percent project financing, which also means there's no down payment. So you generally are going to pay your first payment after you've already received your first month of savings. So there really is nothing out of pocket. It's a, it's a positive cash flow type of financed opportunity. And it's not at loan shark rates. So generally you would think with all these other benefits, I'm going to be paying 20% or 25% annually. It really is comparable to bank financing. It's 6%. You know, I've seen it as low as five and a quarter. I've seen it as high as seven. Um, I've actually seen it even lower when we're dealing with a municipality because we can finance municipalities and we can finance them at, at rates that are even better than bond rates, like two, two and a quarter percent. Um, flexible payment options are available. Recently, we did a school where uh, they were off for three months every year and they only wanted to pay nine months of the year. And no problem. We can do that. Um, some of the smaller deals, like, uh, for example, Menchie's Yogurt are only between three and $5,000. Generally, our financing has a $5,000 minimum, but because there are thousands of Menchie's Yogurts being built, the finance company wanted to go ahead and do it, but we're doing quarterly payments instead of monthly payments. And it's just less paperwork, so lower costs on the finance company side, and the customer was perfectly happy with that. So um, flexible payment options, you know, you could have some religious thing that doesn't allow you to pay on even number months. No problem. Only pay on odd months. Uh, monthly payments are generally going to be below savings, meaning that the savings pays for the lights and still puts cash flow in your pocket. And I say uh, most of the time or, or usually below because there are situations where we're replacing lighting and there's a five or six year payback, but you want to pay for it in three years. And great, we can do that, but know that you know, the monthly payment or the monthly savings is a thousand and your payment is thirteen hundred, for example. But as soon as that product is paid for, you get the entire savings. Um, we offer both operating and capital lease options. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. But basically, a capital lease is is buying on a loan. It's It's like buying a car versus leasing a car is what we're looking at here. So a capital lease, um, you are taking ownership at the moment that that product is installed in your building. And you are um, then taking uh, depreciation on your taxes over time. Whereas with an operating lease, it is, um, it is expensed as an operating expense. So it's no different than paying your electric bill, paying someone to change the light bulb, uh, et cetera. So with a lot of big companies, an operating lease works out much better on their taxes and also within their CapEx uh, restrictions. So you're able to sell into CapEx restricted opportunities. When people say, I have no CapEx to get this job done, great, we'll do it on your operating budgets. Um, rebates and incentives programs to add to those savings. And if you've done any research on the LED business, you probably already know that there are some pretty huge rebates available. And um, you know, there's, there's rebates as high as 70, 80, 90, even 100 percent of the cost of the entire lighting package and installation, but very common, 30 to 50 percent. Um, and in fact, we happen to operate out of uh, one of the very few states in this fine nation where there are no rebates. And, uh, you know, there's constant pressure being put on our largest energy provider, which is FPNL. But um, currently there are no rebates available in Florida. But everywhere else in the country, there are rebates and incentives. Uh, there's a federal incentive, which I believe is going back into play very soon here, which is called the 179D, which is a, uh, a tax benefit, which gives you some tax savings based on, on how much energy you're saving. So um, we manage that process for you. We help you through that process, and we build that into all of our applications as well. So... Um, a great, great benefit in LED that's not available in, in many other businesses out there. Uh, this is a really cool uh, showing of our rebate program 
where this particular hotel in New York was able to get the cost down from $21 on a lamp to $1 on a lamp. So we got a $20 rebate on a $21 lamp. And that's why you just see crazy energy savings. It was actually better than this. Um, I believe someone told me that the payback on this job was less than one week. And it was because of a combination of the wattage reduction and the maintenance reduction and the, um, the rebate that we were able to get on that initial cost. And it actually ended up being much more beautiful. I've seen before and after pictures and a uh, very, very nice job. And we're doing more hotels for that group now as well. Training and support is something we take quite seriously. We use a lot of technology when it comes to, to both training and support and to our systems as well. Um, maybe this slide should actually be called training and systems or training and technology. But um, Luman U is something that we created around Apple's iTunes University that they uh, built for the iPad. And um, so all of our initial training starts out on Luman U. We send you, as soon as you sign a contract, we send you an iPad that's got Luman U on it. You go through your first week, you fill out a little quiz, it opens up the second week. It's just like playing a video game. Um, innovative tools like what we call Clicks, which stands for a Cloud Integrated QuickBooks and Salesforce uh, program. And what we've done is we've basically built something nobody else ever did where um, you're managing your business through Salesforce. You're managing leads and, and uh, lead flow opportunities, um, estimates, and when a customer says, okay, I'll buy it, you just click a button and it pushes it automatically into QuickBooks. QuickBooks pushes back into Salesforce and your Salesforce installation pushes up to our Salesforce cloud so we can compare your data with other companies. You can call us and say, uh, you know, how's my profit look compared to the other franchises? How, uh, you know, my overall revenue, where do I stand? Um, we can compare data between our franchise uh, businesses. We have something called ESP or expert solutions process. That is just a multi-step sales process that is built into our systems. So in Salesforce, you can constantly look at what stage any deal is in and you can see whether your salespeople are stuck or um, whether they need your help or whether they're losing deals too easily. And it's through a process that we call ESP. And uh, then design support is another big area for us. And that is also built into a lot of our tools. And so you can be collaborating on a project um, with our staff here and never actually pick up the phone and talk to them. And that's through the tools that we've created to do that. So we're big on technology, but only as it supports our franchises and our processes. We are coming down to the wire here, folks. This is, I believe, the last slide. Um, so I get, off, I get asked one of my most common questions uh, is, why would I buy your franchise versus doing it myself? I can go out and start Joe's LED company. I can go buy a container of product from Qingqiao Lighting in, in China. And I can be up and running by uh, three months from now with my own brand. And I can build this great, valuable company that somebody from Silicon Valley is going to come and offer me a billion dollars for. Well, I will tell you that those days are, are uh, long gone in the LED business. Nobody's running around uh, paying huge uh, valuations for LED companies right now. And um, so that's not a great opportunity. The other thing is there's no value to those uh, private branded products that are bought from low end, primarily Asian manufacturers, because they're failing much more quickly than your warranty claims. And then most of the companies go out of business as soon as they start getting warranty claims. So uh, it's been actually a big black eye on the LED space, that part, the the low end product. But uh, I digress. So what are the four keys, the four primary reasons why you would join LED Source versus doing it yourself? And one is our industry knowledge. We've been in this business a long time. Um, you know, I'm older than I care to discuss, and I've been in the LED or in the lighting business for about uh, almost 30 years now. And we have other people on staff who have been in the lighting business as long as I have. So we've got an awful lot of industry knowledge and unparalleled experience in the LED business specifically. We've been in LED really since the start of LED, and we just know an awful lot about these products, about um, how they work, how to work with them, how to control them, et cetera. So that's a big one. 
uh, reliable product supply, and you really can get lost and run over in the LED jungle. And there are thousands and thousands of companies out there that, uh, trust me, you know, go out and buy a domain and get yourself an email address that's got LED somewhere in the name. And you're going to get about 100 uh, emails every night, spams from Chinese manufacturers who are saying, you know, I've got this great product and I'll sell it to you really cheap. And, you know, come to me because we're really great and we've been in the business of manufacturing for 20 years. You know, what they didn't tell you is they manufactured uh bath toys and then they manufactured uh, automotive parts and then they manufactured little girls dresses and now they're in the led business so they're not long-time lighting companies they're just manufacturers which there are literally tens of thousands of in china um we actually uh test every product we spend a lot of time testing product we work a lot on the r d side with manufacturers so we actually are are um, advanced enough where we can sit at the table with engineers and, and explain to them why they need certain features, what features they need. We help out a lot with the finishing uh, touches on product with many of our largest manufacturers. So um, we do all of that so that we're able to reliably and safely and without a lot of liability provide product to our franchisees and not feel like we're, we're sending you down the path like most of these guys are. Uh, branding and credibility, we really are becoming trusted in, in all markets in North America. And um, customers now are getting to a point where they're smarter, but they're also more suspicious of LED companies. And that's a good thing because I want customers, I want buyers to be very suspicious of the people that are coming in because quite often they should not be giving their money to these LED guys because they're not really LED guys. They're, they're insurance guys who, who threw a, a brand on a business card and bought some stuff from an electrical distributor or from a, a Chinese importer and uh, now they're an LED company. And honestly, that's not who should be selling these big retrofits into these, these uh, businesses. So we are becoming a trusted supplier and trusted partners to some very, very large companies, well-known companies, hotel groups, businesses, retail companies, restaurant chains, and that matters in this business. So uh, as a franchisee, you'll be able to lean on that branding and credibility. And you know, when they say, what have you done lately? You can say, how about the Miami Tower? How about the Super Bowl? How about Starbucks? How about Marriott? How about this? And uh, your competitors cannot. So there are not very many competitors who have done what we've done. Uh, and proprietary processes, that's a very important thing. You're going to hit the ground running because we're giving you great tools that we've tested. And, you know, one of the good things that you have going for you is you're walking into a system where we've spent millions of dollars and many days banging our face on glass tables saying, what am I doing wrong? And uh, so we've made a lot of mistakes so that you don't have to. And that's a very important uh, key. So those are the four keys as to why you spend your money and buy our franchise instead of doing it yourself. And I, I caution you, if you're thinking about opening a small LED company on your own, uh, you know, even if you're not going to get a franchise from us, I'd rather you go into a completely different industry because you're going to lose money and you're going to get you're going to get killed in this business. It's it's an ugly business right now for a small startup company unless you've got the coverage of a brand like ours and a partnership with a brand like ours. So um, you, some of you may have connected with us on social media and you may have gotten to this webinar on social media. And I thank you for that. And uh, if not, please go ahead and connect with us. We do try to be relevant and fresh with our information on social media. So um, hopefully you'll follow us there and we'll get to know you and have some conversations back and forth. And hopefully uh, you'll end up buying a franchise and you'll end up being a franchise partner to us. So with that, uh, I thank all of you for coming today. I did go a little bit over my hour time limit that I told you I would. Um, and now I'm going to start getting to questions. So if you're not interested in the answers to any of these questions or uh, you have to be somewhere, which I completely understand, then uh, thank you for coming and you can leave now. But otherwise, for the rest of you, I'm going to get to the questions. So uh, are there any franchise opportunities in avail available in Florida? Yes, there are. And uh, you said where in Florida? Pretty much everywhere in Florida. So that's one of the things that changed when our culture changed over the past six months from, uh, I would tell you that a year ago, if you were to ask me, I would tell you I'm going to have 30 or 40 salespeople working out of this corporate office. And um, 
Today, I would tell you I'm not. I'm going to have 10 support people who are supporting franchises uh, located around us in Florida. So our goal is to open franchise offices in Florida um, in every area. And we have none open right now in Florida. And as I said, a year ago, I probably would have told you, no, we're not going to open franchises in most of Florida because we're just going to have salespeople out there. But we've really decided to grow our business 100% by way of franchising. Franchising and national accounts are really the two greatest growth areas for us. Uh, is growth expected to flatten after 2020 or continue? Um, that's a great question. I can be honest with you. I have not projected out that far as far as our budgets and, and sales projections go. I would tell you that I think growth is going to continue for at least the next 15 years. And then probably we'll start to flatten out. But, you know, what's going to happen is technology is going to continue moving. So 15 years from now, I have no idea what a light is going to look like. And a light 15 years from now, you may just walk into a room and, and wave your arm and, and you know, some uh, luminescent thing happens and, and lights come on. And I have no idea what's going to happen with lighting. All I can tell you is it's a very exciting, fast moving technology and it's going to continue moving fast. And one of the greatest opportunities in lighting right now is also control. And so we're heavily vested in the development of control, the knowledge of control. And the reason that control is such a big deal now is with fluorescence, you couldn't control them. You could turn them on, you could turn them off. And that's by way of a power switch. Um, now you can turn lights on and off from an iPhone. You can turn them on and off by walking in a room. You can dim them based on different things happening. You can change colors based on different things happening. So it's, it's a rapidly changing market, and we're going to stay on top of technology at all times. How much is the buy-in? Um, a, a typical franchise, you're going to be all in, 100%, all your investment uh, for less than $100,000 plus operating capital. And the operating capital varies depending on what you want to do, how many employees you want to have, what market you're in, et cetera. But all in, furnished, painted, ready to open your doors, less than $100,000. Uh, as a franchisee, what would be the cost on a gas station light retrofit kit? Um, honestly, sir, that's like asking, you know, how, how long is a rope? Because there are a lot of different products available that we could put into a, a gas station canopy. It really depends on the exact needs of that particular opportunity. Um, you know, what kind of light levels we're trying to meet, what quality the guy is after. Does he want price or does he want quality? But I would say you're going to start somewhere around $250 uh, for a gas station canopy, maybe a little bit higher than that. I sent in my application last week. How long, how long, until you will be able to make a decision about moving forward in the process. Um, if our office has not been communicating back and forth with you, then I apologize. But typically you're going to get uh, an automated email first, and then you'll actually have someone, a, a franchise coordinator or uh, Karen, who I showed you her picture earlier, um, would be contacting you and keeping the process moving. So you should um, get at some point you should get an email asking for a few financial details because you didn't put those on the initial application. If you've already done that, then you should be receiving our FBD, our franchise disclosure document, and um, scheduling a call with someone here, which could even be myself. So um, that's generally how the process works. And I apologize if it's moving slowly, but it shouldn't be. Uh, in five or 10 years, as the lighting industry moves to LEDs as their mainstay as a light source, and LED lighting becomes the primary source of lighting throughout the world. What do you see the role of LED source at that time? Um, another great question. What I will tell you is because of the amount of options and control options and technology involved, involved in LED, there will always be a need for a really knowledgeable expert in LED. And that's who we intend to be forever. So um, I think we'll be the same company we are today. We just may not be doing retrofits the same way we are today. We might be more of a uh, buy your LEDs here, um, whether for the construction market or for the contracting markets or end users as well. So um, that is an area where I do apply a lot of thought it, it is, you know, as the business evolves, what is our role in that business? And I think we're going to evolve at the same speed that the industry does. 
Are the current franchisees allowed and or willing to share revenue and profits with prospects? God, you guys are asking really great questions. Um, yes, they are. And it's through a process that we call validation calls. And during the process of going back and forth with us, we will get to a point where you can make some validation calls. We'll give you a list of our franchisees and we will give our franchisees your name and we will give you a password to give to our franchisees. The reason is I don't want everybody from this webinar webinar just calling up and saying, so what are your revenues this year and what's your profit margin? And uh, we want it to be a controlled environment where, you know, we're, we don't have competitors calling up and asking for revenue. But yes, absolutely. That is information that you can get from our franchisees during part of this process. Uh, please confirm we will not be doing the installations. Jerry, you will not be doing the installations. Um, however, I will put a caveat on that. Um, we have, for example, Sam, our Detroit franchise, owns an electrical contracting firm. They do installations. Uh, our, um, our Denver franchise owns a sign contracting firm. They do installations. So if you're in a position where it supports another business that you have, you know, primarily a, an electrical contracting business, then absolutely you can do installations and will do installations. Some of our franchisees do installations as a service where it's just lamps and stuff. They'll bring out a ladder in their pickup truck with, with uh, you know, a couple of hundred lamps and they'll do it for the customer and they've built that into the profit margins. And it's just a customer relations kind of thing, but it's not really part of your business at all. Uh, could you please go over the current status of the national account program? I'm not positive I understand that question, Jerry. Um, it is active. It's alive and well. We have about eight brands in it right now. We'll probably add about 12 brands this year, uh, 12 companies where we're exclusively providing their lighting on a national account level. Um, we have some very big brands, uh, Massage Envy, Menchie's Yogurt, uh, Hurricane Grill and Wings, um, Pinot's Palette, uh, fast signs. So we're doing some very, very great uh, national account work right now. So um, hopefully that answers your question. I noticed there are almost no franchisees on the West Coast. You know what, Chris? So did I. I, I noticed the exact same thing. I don't know why. I, it's a very strange um, phenomenon, I guess. We get far more requests for, for franchises in Canada and on the East Coast, and actually in the Midwest, in the center of the United States, we get a lot more uh, franchise requests than we do on the West Coast. I am not sure why, I have no idea, because the rebates are amazing, the need is huge. You know, in California specifically, you don't have enough energy for your, your people and your businesses, so you're always you know, doing these rolling brownouts and you're buying energy from Canada and all kinds of things. So you need it more than anyone does, yet uh, we have the least amount of um, uh, success in, in uh, selling franchises there. So part of the reason I will tell you this, you know, part of the reason we only have 14 or 15 franchises is because we don't try to sell them yet. And we've never had a sales staff. We've never had marketing to franchises. Uh, we've never gone out and actively pursued franchises. They've come to us and said, I really want to buy an LED source franchise. And then we get in a conversation. So um, that is changing. We are in the process now of hiring what we call a VP of franchise development, who will be responsible for our franchise sales. And we'll be going out and growing our franchise business. Uh, got that one. Where does your biggest competition come from? What sets you apart? Um, didn't I just talk for an hour and a half? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. We, uh, where does our biggest competition come from? I would say two general areas. One is electrical distribution and contracting. So um, companies like Rexel and Graybar and Granger who are selling through contractors and that combination goes out and goes after retrofit. I will tell you that's probably our lightest competition, even though they do a lot of volume. When we go against them in a job, electrical contractors, and I apologize if there are any on this call, but you're generally not the greatest salespeople. And, you know, I don't know if that's by nature or because you're because, you know, you prefer to work, you know, in contracting with your hands or whatever it is. But um, our our franchisees are trained to be great salespeople. So generally, when they come up against a contractor, they're going to beat them. 
The other more difficult and more unknown competitor is the guys that I've been talking about during this webinar. The guys who are uh, buying cheap Chinese products, rebranding them and selling them as equivalent or equal or as good as the Philips or Hubble or Ephineon products that we're selling at LED Source. And they're not. I mean, it's like basically, uh, uh, you know, two car guys standing next to each other, one selling a Mercedes, one selling, again, I'm trying really hard not to offend anyone, but uh, a Hyundai, let's say for now. Um, and the guy selling the Hyundai basically telling you everything about it is every bit as good as the Mercedes and you're buying it for 20% of the cost. Well, chances are that's just not the case, you know, and um, in LED, more than any product I've ever seen, the, the difference in quality and reliability between good and bad or cheap and, and high quality products is, is so vast. It's night and day, literally. So um, we know the stuff they're selling is garbage. We know they've got 70% margins in it because they're trying to sell it for the same price we're selling a very high quality Philips product. And... Um, but it's hard to tell the customer that. So you, I've never been a sales guy that tries to sell something based on beating up my competitor. Uh, you know, I try to point out the advantages of my product, but I don't say this guy's selling garbage from China, you know, even though that really is the case. So that is that is probably that makes up the core of our competitor is these guys who have no history in the lighting business. They don't really know what they're doing. They bought a cheap piece of software for $39 a month that allows them to go and do audits. And they're selling stuff that they're buying, you know, either in, in Walmart or in Costco or from, uh, you know, an electrical supply house down the road. And uh, that's just not who we are. So hopefully what sets us apart is all the things that I've just talked to you about. Uh, you know, no one out there, none of our competitors have design staff um, where they're able to help you through a project like that. You're just on your own. So um, big stuff there. What are some new developments coming in the near future? I just can't tell you that because they're new developments. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of really great developments both around lighting technology and also on the control side. One of the great things that we've just uh, aligned ourselves with is a, a small entrepreneurial startup company heavily backed by, I think, uh, private equity group um, based out of Austin. But they do a color changing, very high end, very high uh, color rendering, very high quality um, product where you're able not, not only to change to any color, but one of the more important things is you could, it's a tunable white product, totally wireless, um, really, really super cool technology. I could spend all day talking about it, but I won't. Um, controls, controls built into lighting products is amazing technology, and it just keeps getting better every day. You know, we've got a new Philips product called Instant, uh, not Instant Fit, I'm sorry, Evo Kit, which is a fluorescent trough or replacement uh, but a retrofit, not a replacement. And it has wireless controls built into it. So you can, using a little handheld remote control, you can program what you want these lights to do. When people wa walk under them, I want it to come on at, at full brightness. But when you walk away, I want it to wait five or six minutes and then fade down to 50%. I can program it to do that. I can also program it to use what's called uh, daylight harvesting, which means if I open the blinds in this room and there's natural light coming in, now I don't need as much of that light. So um, I can have it maintain a certain level of brightness, whether that's coming from natural light or uh, unnatural light from the LEDs. So those are some of the developments. One of the things a lot of people talk about is OLED, uh, organic LED. And OLED is a completely different technology, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. I will tell you that it's an amazing technology that has some very unique benefits, even over LED. But as a general light source, I don't know that it'll ever reach any kind of uh, critical mass. Um, I think absolutely LED is, is the thing for the next, uh, uh, you know, for as long as I can see into the future anyways. And OLED is going to find some applications in flat panel lighting, obviously already in things like back, backlit uh, for computer screens, for phones, for televisions. Um, but I don't know that it's going to become a light source, but really cool technology. I could go on and on. I mean, there's incredible things coming. Uh, one of the things we have coming is a private labeled Ephineon sports light 
that we're pretty excited about. I have a uh, an awful lot of uh, time and money and, and energy invested into the racing business because my son is a racing driver and we're now lighting a lot of racetracks with LED using uh, an Affineon sports light that belongs to LED source. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of other opportunities for that kind of stuff as well. So uh, I have been in high end custom installation com computer consumer electronics business for nearly 30 years and have seen this technology in custom homes as well as commercial spaces. I manage a dealer base of over 400 in the something channel, CI, consumer intelligence. I don't know. What's CI? Uh, is anyone selling this channel now? Um, Chris, that is a great question. I would say on a small scale, yes. On a large scale, probably not. And that would be a conversation I would love to have. So you can send me an email directly and maybe we can get on the phone or something and talk a little bit more. But um, my email address, by the way, is Marcel, M-A-R-C-E-L, at ledsource.com. And uh, I'd love to talk to you more about that. What are your royalty fees? Uh, they are currently 3.5% and going up to 5% very soon. So I can't tell you what day that's happening, but um, they are going up to 5% very soon because uh, honestly, 3.5% just isn't enough to manage a franchise business. And we're adding a lot of people and processes and systems and uh, value. And uh, so we're raising the fee a bit. If you've researched franchising at all, you'll probably uh, agree that most franchising royalties are between 7 and 12%. So at 5, it's still an amazing bargain. I'm really interested in focusing on industrial warehouse type of markets. What would be the best way to market to this category? Well, um, that's a great question. I mean, number one would be to really target a, a highly visible location, a highly visible opportunity, get that sold, and then go market that to everyone else. So like, for example, down here, we're about to light a very visible, very large furniture warehouse that anyone who lives in South Florida knows exactly what I'm talking about and knows exactly where it is. And it's kind of the crown jewel of warehouses if you wanted to light a big warehouse. And it's, uh, I think it's pushing a million square feet. It's very big. Um, we're about to do that. And that's about a million dollar project. And um, I will tell you that just on, based on doing that, we're going to have a lineup of other warehouse opportunities that are going to want to work with us. Uh, and it's just because of the, the stature and the, just the level of an opportunity that one is or the level of building it is. So um, really, that would be one thing. Another thing would be just to become an expert, you know, become the guy who knows more than anybody else about lighting warehouse projects. And we will help you to do that. And we'll give you a, a very small list of product that you'll work with. You know, you'll have five or six go-to products that are going to be amazing, and you'll know more about those five or six products than anyone does. And you'll be the expert. You'll be the guy that everyone says, hey, call Brad if you're looking to light a warehouse. Uh, can you give us a little more information on the marketing support? Yes, I can, as a matter of fact. So um, first of all, we set you up initially with uh, uh, everything from Salesforce licenses, QuickBook licenses, all of those types of things. So that's not really marketing support. That's more of a, just a setup function. We get you business cards. Um, we are currently handling ourselves everything from uh, swag, promotional items, shirts, all that kind of stuff, to literature, brochures, documents, whatever, to the pictures that you hang on your walls, the framed pictures. We're currently working to outsource that to a marketing company who that's what they do. So you can order brochures from them, T-shirts, hats, cups, whatever you want, all of those types of things. But they house all of our marketing materials. That's number one. Number two, um, lead acquisition. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we're setting up a call center. Uh, we will be able to field you, uh, you know, whatever number of leads you want. So if you say, you know, for the month of April, I'm going to be targeting car dealerships. I want 100 leads for car dealerships. We'll set you up with those 100 leads for car dealerships, that kind of stuff. Um, we'll work with you on all of your social media. Um, we'll provide you with social media content. So although uh, LED source, uh, you know, Louisville might be uh, your um, domain or your Facebook page or your whatever it is, your Twitter 
uh, handle, we may provide content onto that for, on a global basis. So we're sending out a press release. We'll send it out through that as well. Um, anything I'm missing here that I haven't email really? Direct mail, marketing. direct mail marketing, email marketing are things that we do uh, more here at the Franchise Support Center. But the leads that come from that are all pushed out to the franchisees. So that's kind of the core of it. There's a whole lot more. I mean, I know that we keep a marketing staff pretty busy for our franchisees. Who are your competitors? I've already covered that. Uh, are electrical contractors focusing on the LED market? Are you able to compete on price with bigger contractors? I kind of already covered that, but I'll, I'll go over that a little bit again because I kind of missed one point. Um, LED is kind of counter uh, business development for a, an electrical contractor. And the reason I say that is many electrical contractors, their business is based around going out to commercial spaces and changing out light bulbs that are dead or changing ballasts that are dead in your two by fours. Um, so that maintenance cost that we're building in as a savings is paid out to an electrical contractor. So an electrical contractor is basically losing business by selling you LEDs. So it's counterproductive. It's not, it's not uh, conducive to profitability in his company because he's going to sell one lighting product and then he's got to go find another customer in his mind. So in that regard, um, electrical contractors have been very slow to respond and very slow to jump into the LED space. They'll sell it in new construction when it's requested, but they prefer to sell older technology because they're selling basically uh, failures and they're going to be the one that comes in to fix that failure. Are we able to compete on price? Not only are we able to compete on price, we're much better on price than large contractors. Contractors are buying their product through at least one layer of distribution. Um, manufacturers do not sell direct to contractors. Uh, we buy direct from all of the manufacturers, so we don't buy through distribution. So we're taking out a, a level of profit in the center and so it's, it, and then we provide that pricing off to our franchisees with a very small markup that just really covers our cost of stocking the product and shipping it out to our franchisees. So um, yes, we're very competitive. Uh, do most of your franchisee, uh, let me go back to that previous question. When we're talking apples to apples, we're incredibly competitive. What happens again, going back to the cheap Chinese knockoffs, is we'll sell a Philips uh, BR30 lamp and our competitor might sell a Ching Chow lighting BR30 lamp and say that it's the exact same thing. That lamp cost him $6, the Philips might cost you $10 and you're both selling them for, for $12. You know, now you've had to meet a price where you're not making very good profit. He's able to sell and make a great profit at that price, but he's lying to the customer. And so it's really hard to do anything about someone who's willing to lie to the customer. Do most of your franchisees have an electrician on staff? No. Uh, do they work with local electricians for installation on projects? Yes. Um, so one of the things we actually go over in training is really how to create those relationships with local contractors, what you're looking for in local contractors, why you don't just want to use anyone, uh, why on certain projects you may not want the customer to use his own contractor, etc. So it is a, a key point, but it's not something that where we've decided that we want to get our hands dirty and bring contractors into the fold. Uh, do your franchisees sell or distribute to other local contractors? Yes. Would they be able to become a second franchise in our area? Yes. So uh, you got some positives and some negatives out of that question. How is a franchisee territory size determined? We've recently actually changed our model. We don't give physical territories that I would call an exclusive territory. Instead, what we give is called a market area. So let me grab a city, let's say Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, let's say you buy a franchise from us in Jacksonville, Florida, and we give you a market area of Jacksonville. We may also give you, a, well, at Jacksonville and surroundings, so Jacksonville Metro, let's call it. Um, we may also give you a right of first refusal to add a second location in Jacksonville. Um, meaning, if another guy comes along and you're doing great business and um, this other guy wants to open a franchise in Jacksonville, 
I guarantee you no one franchise can absolutely 100% cover a city the size of Jacksonville. And so absolutely we could fit three, three franchises in Jacksonville. You'll never run into each other. You'll never compete with each other. But for argument's sake, let's say you want to control Jacksonville Metro, we would build in a right of first refusal and um, you would have that option to open a second franchise instead of us selling it to someone else. So that's the type of thing. Basically, once we have a franchisee in, we'd rather grow that territory with you. But um, no single franchisee can cover any major, uh, well, not even major, any reasonable size city in this country. Because you have to think, everyone with lights really is a target for us. And one guy is going to do really well on healthcare. Another guy might do really well on industrial opportunities. And, you know, by, by limiting our opportunities in a territory does not help you. Because what it does is it creates opportunity for competitors. So that's really how we work with territory. If you have more questions about that, again, just send an email to either franchising at or directly to me. Uh, is the franchise based on FICA score of the buyer? No, it's not. Um, absolutely, we do look at your credit worthiness because we wanna make sure you can stay in business and you can manage a business, but it's really based on your past, uh, obviously your ability to capitalize this business, to fund it, um, but your past really what you've done in the past, if you've been a, uh, you know, in sales or a, been an entrepreneur or in business, you'd probably uh, become a great franchise. Um, and I'm not going to pick on any more people, so I won't say the ones that I don't think would become great franchises. But um, we're looking more at just whether or not we think you could be a successful franchise. You know, if you've had a bankruptcy in the past, we will still look at you because it just means that you tried a lot of things and, and that business failed. We'll look at whether it was you who failed or the business that failed, though. Uh, do you calculate your franchise fee and area protection? Are there any other fees besides franchise fee? Um, besides the franchise fee, the only other thing that you're paying when to us when you buy a franchise is um, the initial package that you get from us, but you're paying for actual things. So that initial package will include all of your software life licenses to get up and running, um, marketing materials, pictures for your walls. Um, really, that's it. So, you know, no, there are no other fees. Uh, in our FDD, you'll see that there are other fees list listed, including things like a renewal fee when you go to renew your franchise. Most times that's waived. Um, a uh, relocation fee, which is always waived. So it may not even be in our new upcoming FDD. Uh, so yeah, we're not a very fee-heavy franchise system. It's uh, our fee. Our initial fee is forty-nine forty-nine thousand five hundred, and that pretty much covers most of what you need it to cover. The average cost to become a franchise. Again, I covered that earlier, but I'll just say it again: under a hundred thousand dollars, all in, including the build out of your franchise, not including uh, your um, operating capital that you'll need to run the business until you're profitable. Uh, what is the cost of a franchise? You guys are real consistent on this one. Uh, I see you mentioned control. Do you partner with Lutron, Crestron, Control4, Leviton, or other manufacturers? Great question. Um, we are a Lutron distributor, but uh, Crestron, Control4, Crestron, we work with a lot of Crestron guys out there, integrators, programmers. Um, Control 4, same thing. Leviton, we don't deal with currently, but we know their products. Other control manufacturers, we're dealing with a lot of more state-of-the-art stuff, stuff to control you know, an entire building or the entire exterior of a color-changing building or a building management system where we're working with an overall very large, like a Johnson Controls kind of situation. But other than that, um, the only real controls that we stock and carry from a standpoint of general lighting controls is Lutron. And all of our franchisees have a Lutron graphic eye in their conference room that controls all of their different lighting in the conference room. Uh, do you offer franchise financing? No, we do not. And I know there are areas where you can get it out there, but honestly, until today, we've never brought in a franchisee who required financing to get into business. And um, I don't know that we would because we want well-capitalized franchisees 
and not because we're elitists and only want rich people, but because this is a business that for some, you're going to become profitable right away. For others, it's going to take you a year. And so we want to make sure that you're well enough capitalized to really take advantage of the opportunities that your local market brings, but that you're not going to run out of business um, by the time you're profitable. Do you have a list of acceptable local electrical contractors that can be used in South Florida? Um, not really. I mean, we're not that rigid. Uh, we certainly have a list of ones that I wouldn't use in South Florida. I'll tell you that right now. But um, we'll look at any contractor and have a quick conversation with them and tell you whether or not we'd use them generally. Um, I do have some recommended in South Florida, though, that have done lots of jobs for us. So it kind of depends on the job, too. I'd send a different guy for a community landscaping project than I would for a retail store that's hanging new lights. Um, average net margin, I cannot discuss. That falls under the uh, what's called an FPR, financial performance representation, and is governed by the Federal Trade Commission, and they tell me I'm not allowed to talk about it, so I apologize. Uh, what are the rebates and royalty fees? What are the rebates? I'm not sure what you're asking. Royalties, I've already discussed, 3.5% current, going up to 5% soon. Have you established a relationship with a supplier like Luxel that offers plug-and-play lamps? I have no idea who Luxel is. Again, they're probably one of these creative little startup companies. And we have plug-and-play lamps from Philips. We have our own brand of plug-and-play lamps. So we have lots of plug-and-play lamps, I promise you that. And we, have, we were the first company selling the first plug-and-play lamp, which was called the Philips Instant Fit. And we're a very close partner with Philips on that product. Um, someone just said, this is freaking awesome. I'll take five. And that happens to be Sandy Lechner, who's the head of our, uh, uh, well, he's our chief operating officer and also manages our franchise business. So I told him if he tried to heckle me on this webinar, I would make a fool of him. So, uh, I think you've all seen his picture. I don't need to do much more. Uh, custom install. That is not a question. Chris, come on. It must be the South Florida sun that's getting to you because custom install is not a question. I don't know what that means. Oh, there was a question earlier. What did CI stand for? Custom oh, install. Yes. I get it. I apologize. You're right. I'm wrong. Uh, less than 100,000, less operating capital. Less than 100,000, less operating capital. Correct. So it's, it's under $100,000 to get into business plus operating capital, not less operating capital. Are you guys trying to screw me up now or something? I think that uh, I've got all the, the kidders on here. You, the, guy, the last questions are all the guys that are trying to heckle me. Uh, can franchisees have their own websites? No, you have what we call a microsite through us. So for example, it might be ledsource.com slash uh, Wichita, for example, for our Wichita office. You have some control over the content that goes on that page. But what we can't create is like a wild, wild west where everybody's got different products up on a website and pricing and everything else. So um, currently, that is how we handle your own websites. And similar on um, a lot of the social media sites, you manage it, but we're also able to control some of the content. Is there franchise financing available? I already answered that one. No, I apologize. There is not. Not through us. There is elsewhere out there. And there's also some pretty fancy systems where you're able to tap into your, uh, if you're like me, and I used to work for a bunch of different companies early in my career, and I've still got four different 401ks sitting out there um, with enough money in it to start a couple of LED source franchises, uh, you can actually use that capital. You can use those 401ks and invest in a business using that money. And there are companies out there. One of them is called uh, Bene, Benetrade is one that I know uh, a couple of our franchisees actually used. Um, but there are companies out there that can finance your business or that you can use your own uh, capital that's sitting in a 401k to finance a business. Now, there's then some kind of laws and rules and stuff on how the profits flow and everything else because uh, remember, you're using tax free income at that point to uh, invest in your business. Uh, at what population would your franchise be exclusive? 
it doesn't really have anything to do with a population. Um, we don't really deal with populations much. We're dealing more with how many businesses are in an area and that kind of thing. But we don't generally deal with exclusive franchises. Again, we're dealing with no uh, exclusive territory, but more of a marketing territory. Um, again, I'd be willing to have a conversation, a grander conversation with you about that if that's something important. But uh, I will tell you that, you know, within probably a two mile radius of wherever your office would be, there's enough business to keep most franchises busy full time. What is an approximate length of time to get a new franchise running? Let's say you start today and you go to our site right now and you fill out an application. Probably about three months from today, you could be opening your new franchise, uh, including training. So um, that's if you're moving quickly. What is the range of net income? Not a question that I can answer. I apologize. You said project savings last 10 to 15 years. Are the lamps warranted for more than five years? That's a great question. Um, some manufacturers, especially on the fixture side, have 10-year warranties, and some are even working on longer warranties now. So um, generally 15, 20 years, no, that's not a warranty that anyone's going to give. I know there are some fairly fancy uh, programs out there that are offering lifetime warranties. I would read very deeply into that and understand it completely before I would buy into that uh, type of uh, a statement. But uh, yeah, I mean, five years to 10 years are pretty standard warranties on our product. I am finally through the questions and I can't believe uh, about 60% of you stayed on this call the entire time. So I do appreciate all of your time today and I hope that we uh, continue. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Sandy. How can I get Sandy back on this webinar? Because I've still got a bunch of people listening. Uh, Sandy just dropped a good one on me, but I'm not going to read it out loud this time. Anyways, I appreciate all of your time, and I hope that you stay engaged. And uh, to do so, you go to our website, ledsource.com, go to the franchising link, and it's really a very simple application. It, you don't even know you're filling out an application. You're answering questions, getting a little bit of information. At the end of the day, we get an application. We'll start contacting you and going back and forth about you know what it is to become an LED source franchise, et cetera. Um, but we do hope to continue the conversation with you. And I hope uh, to talk to each of you in the future. Thank you very much.